Doris. Look, there's something very strange up there in the sky. Well, it's probably a bird. It doesn't sound like a bird. And look, Morris, it's all pink. Pink? And flying? Well, then, it must be Polly the plane. It is. Hello, Hello Polly. Hello, hamsters. Phew, what a journey. I've come all the way from Tumbledown Town. Why, Polly? Why? To tell you a story, of course. It's all about me. Me and the pink flower. One morning, I was sitting on my runway in Tumbledown Town having a lovely wash. The dear little tumbledownies had got out their buckets and mops, and they were squirting me with warm, soapy water and polishing my wings. Oh, it did feel good. Suddenly, who should come trundling into Tumbledown Town but Digby? Bleep, bloop, blip, blop, blip, went his little robot motor. Polly, he cried, please help me. I need a very special flower. A special flower, a special flower, chanted the tumbledownies. <coughs> yes, said Digby. I've made the most beautiful flower arrangement in the magic garden, and I must have a pink pom-pom to make it extra special. But there's only one pink pom-pom plant on the whole of Magic Mountain, I cried. Well, if you fly me high up in the sky, said Digby, I could look down on Magic Mountain and try to spot it. Golly gosh, I cried. Tumbledownies, this is a job for you. Jump aboard with Digby and keep an eye out for the pom-pom flower. I started to count the tumbledownies. Arabella, Bert, Charlie, Bert? Where's Bert? Anyone seen Bert? We looked all over Tumbledown Town, but there was no sign of him. Oh well, I said. We'll just have to go without him. Off we jolly well go. I started up my engine, and soon we were all flying high above Magic Mountain. All of us except Bert, that is. We crossed the snowy peak of Magic Mountain and looked down at the fields on the other side. Suddenly, Digby shouted, Look, over there, I can see the pink pom-pom. I swooped down low, and sure enough, there was a beautiful pink flower. Golly gosh, I cried. It's moving. The pink pom-pom seemed to be walking across the grass. I landed nearby, and Digby and the tumbledownies clambered out. Hey, pom-pom flower, shouted Digby. Come back. The flower turned and looked at us. It wasn't a flower at all. It was Bert, the tumbledowny, with the pom-pom flower on his head. <coughs> Bert, I said, why have you got that flower on your head? Oh, hello, Polly, said Bert. Well, it makes such a lovely hat. But that was the only pom-pom flower on Magic Mountain, cried Digby. And now you've gone and picked it. You're a very naughty tumbledown, Ebert, I said. You will come with me and Digby to the magic garden and stand in the middle of Digby's flower arrangement to make it extra special. I don't mind, said Bert. I love wearing my flower hat. I'd like to wear it always. <laughs> So, when we landed in the magic garden, Digby put Bert and the pom-pom flower in just the right place to make the flower arrangement extra special. And Leroy and Spot and Margot the mouse came to look, and we all agreed that the pom-pom flower looked very nice with Bert's little green face peeping out underneath.
Dolly, I'd love to see that flower arrangement. I've got a picture. Look, doesn't little Bert look sweet? Uh, I think it looks soppy. Morris, you're so rude. <clears throat> I don't suppose you know any songs, do you, Polly? Well, funnily enough, I brought along a record with the dear little tumble downies singing on it. Oh! Shall I play it for you? Pictures? Records? I'm surprised you don't open a shop. Maurice, be quiet. Uh, yes, please, Polly. We'd love to hear it. Good. It's called Polly's Song. When the sun goes down over tumble down town, you can hear a song on the breeze. It carries with ease across hills and trees. The tumble down is love it and the words are bees. I am Polly, Polly the plain. Never melancholy, I'm a jolly old plain. Wherever I go flying, I'm happy to explain that I'm jolly old Polly, Polly the plain. Jolly old Polly, Polly the plain. Never melancholy, she's a jolly old plain. Wherever we go flying, we're happy to explain that we love jolly Polly. Polly the plane. I am Polly, Polly the plane. Never melancholy, I'm a jolly old plane. Wherever I go flying, I'm happy to explain that I'm jolly old Polly, Polly the plane. Well, hamsters, I must be getting off home to tumble down town. I've enjoyed my visit to the countryside. I'm a town girl at heart. I know exactly what you mean, Polly. I love visiting Tumbledown Town, but I'm always glad to get back to my little house in the country. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. Once upon a time, there were two mice who were cousins. One lived in the country, surrounded by trees and fields and hills. The other mouse lived in the town, surrounded by buildings and cars and people. Country mouse lived under a hedge, with a roof of leaves and berries. Town mouse lived behind a cupboard in a fine big house. One rainy day, Town Mouse travelled into the country to visit her cousin. Town Mouse didn't like the countryside at all. I don't know how you can live here, she said, brushing the mud off her clean paws. The rain comes in, the floor is always dirty, and what do you eat? Country Mouse laughed. <laughs> Look, there's all that corn in the farmer's field. I have plenty of food to last me all year long. What? said her town cousin. You eat corn? But it's so boring. And you have to go out in the wind and rain to get it. I'm very sorry for you, cousin. Why don't you live in town like me? I've never been to town, said Country Mouse. I don't know what it's like. Then you must come and visit me, cried Town Mouse, packing her bags. So, soon after that, Country Mouse travelled up to town to visit her cousin. The mouse hole behind the cupboard seemed like a palace. There was carpet on the floor, there were no draughts, no leaks, and no dirty mud anywhere. Oh, it must be lovely to live like this, cried Country Mouse. You're so lucky. Yes, and just wait until dinner time, said Town Mouse proudly. That evening, there was a party in the house, and when the people had left the room, the two little mice pattered across the carpet. This is easy, said Country Mouse, as they climbed up the white tablecloth. Oh, I've never seen so much lovely food, cried Country Mouse as she looked around her. You're so lucky, cousin. Town Mouse didn't answer. She was busy eating a lump of cheese and sipping cold tea out of a china cup. 
country mouse ate cheese and bread, biscuits and cake, nuts and chocolate. Why should I live in the country when I can live like this in town? She thought. I shall never go back to that dirty, drafty old hedge. Softly, silently, the door of the room swung open. Two pointed brown ears and two huge green eyes appeared round the edge of the door. Quick, run for your life! Squeaked Town Mouse as the creature leapt onto the table. Meow. Country Mouse scampered this way and that, but she'd eaten so much she couldn't run very fast. She felt the creature's breath on her back. A huge paw with long claws knocked her off the table, but she picked herself up and ran behind the cupboard. She was safe at last. Boom, boom, boom. Her heart thumped with fright. What a terrible creature! What a dreadful beast! She panted, clinging to her cousin. Oh, that! It's only the house cat, said Town Mouse with a shrug. You get used to it. What are you doing? I'm packing, said Country Mouse, opening her suitcase. It's nice to visit different places, but now I know where I belong. I'm a Country Mouse. And she went back to her home in the hedge and never visited town again. Bye, Doris. Where are you going, Morris? I'm going walking. I want to explore. Oh, stay a little bit, Morris. I want to sing. I'll make it a walking song if you'll stay. All right, Doris. Just for you. Hooray! Let's sing There Was a Crooked Man. There was a crooked man and he went a crooked mile He found a crooked sixpence against a crooked stile He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse And they all lived together in a little crooked house There was a crooked man and he went a crooked mile He found a crooked sixpence against a crooked stile He bought a crooked cat which caught a crooked mouse And they all lived together in a little crooked house Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all sailing upon the sea. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, turn them out, rose all three. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all sailing upon the sea. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub, and who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, turn them out, rogues all three. Gosh, Doris, I'm having a busy day. I've sung a song, I've been walking, I've even made my bed. I've been busy too. I've sung a song, I've done the shopping, and I've made your bed properly. But I can think of one thing we haven't done. What? We haven't made a spell. Shall we say our spell for a story? Oh, yes! Ready? Bing, Bing bang, bang, bong, rat-a-tat-tat. Rat -tat -tat. Let's, Let's have, have a story, story. just <laughs> like that. Alexander's Magic Quilt It was a lovely night. Alexander sat by the open window in his bedroom. He wrapped his patchwork quilt round his knees to keep him warm. It was a very special patchwork quilt. His mother had worked into it lots of little square pictures of all the animals in his picture book. Elephants, lions, monkeys, giraffes and tigers.
I wish this was a magic quilt, thought Alexander. Then I might find myself riding on a tiger. But nothing magic ever happens to me. That's where you've made a big mistake, said a gruff voice. And outside his window, Alexander saw the head of a giraffe. Alexander nearly fell off his chair with surprise. We are the animals from your quilt, said the giraffe. And we are going to give you a wish. What do you wish? Alexander was terribly excited. Oh, I wish, he said, I wish I was riding through the jungle on the back of the largest and fiercest tiger in the whole world. Oh, dear, said the elephant who had just appeared. Not a suitable wish. Tigers are so unreliable. Alexander didn't listen because suddenly he was sitting on the back of an enormous black and orange tiger. Now, said the giraffe, you must hold your patchwork quilt very tightly. As long as you hold on to it, you are perfectly safe. But if you let go of it, said the elephant, anything could happen to you. <laughs> At first, it was wonderful, and Alexander enjoyed his ride. He saw little brown monkeys in the trees, birds with scarlet feathers, a big blue snake curled round a tree trunk, and a spotted leopard sleeping in the grass. Then he began to get a little tired, and as the tiger sprang over a fallen tree trunk, he let go of his magic quilt. It fell on the ground, and vanished. The tiger stopped and turned to look at Alexander. Why should I carry you through the jungle on my back, he said. You are only really good for eating. Alexander was scared. He looked round for his magic patchwork quilt. Careless, aren't you, said the tiger. You've lost your magic quilt. Now, Take off your dressing gown. The buttons will give me tummy ache. Alexander began to take off his dressing gown very, very slowly. Hurry up, said the tiger. I'm getting hungry. Suddenly, Alexander heard a sound in the trees above his head. Looking up, he saw three little brown monkeys. They were playing with his magic quilt. Then all at once, they dropped the quilt and it landed on the tiger's back. Alexander jumped back onto the tiger and he clutched his quilt with both hands, determined not to lose it again. Oh, dear, the tiger sighed. This is not my lucky day. Where do you want to go? Home, said Alexander. The elephant and the giraffe were waiting for him when he returned. Enjoy yourself, said the elephant. I think so, said Alexander. Anyway, I'd like another trip on another night, please. Alexander got into bed and the animals melted into the darkness. Curled up under his magic patchwork quilt, Alexander went to sleep. Hello, Morris. Hello, Doris. It's me, Polly. I'm back again. Gosh, Polly, you are lucky being able to fly. I wish I could. I wish I could swim. But you can always pretend to travel any way you want. Listen to the rhyme. Travellers. This is the way the puffer train goes. Puff a puff, puff, choo choo. Under the tunnel and over the bridge, whistling hoot-toot-toot. This is the way the skaters go. 
Hiss, whoosh, hiss, whoosh, hiss. With dusters for skates on a nice shiny floor, their feet going that way and this. This is the way the rowers go. In, out, in, out, in. Racing their rowing boats up and down stream, trying their best to win. This is the way the swimmers go. Kick, splash, kick, splash, kick. Hoping to travel as fast as a fish, but fishes have tails to flick. This is the way the horses go. Clippity, clippity, clop. I'll be the rider if you'll be the horse. Then in a few minutes, we'll swap. This is the way the big bus goes. Rattle, ding, ding, vroom, vroom. Just think of the animals, people and things you can be while you're crossing the room. Look at this rubber ball, Doris. It's lovely and bouncy. Be careful how you bounce it, Maurice, or it might bounce away and you'll never see it again. Denise knows a story about a bouncy ball. <laughs> Bounce, bounce. The children were playing with a big red ball. It was a very bouncy ball. This is fun, shouted Leon. What a bouncy ball! And he gave it a great kick. It bounced past Susie, flew over James, and zoomed over the hedge. Bounce, bounce, bounce. The big red ball flew down the hill. It bounced against lampposts and bus stops and walls. Then it bounced into the traffic. What a lovely bouncy ball, called a little girl. But the grown-ups in the cars hooted angrily and a motorbike rider gave the big red ball a great kick. <laughs> Bounce, bounce. The big red ball sailed over the cars, bounced on the rooftops, and landed in front of a factory. The factory men were outside having their lunch. Look! A football! They began to play a game with the big red ball. One young man gave it a great kick. Bounce, bounce, bounce. The big red ball bounced over the factory, jumped on the highway and bounced over a hedge and into Farmer Giles's milk. What a bouncy ball, said the farmer. I'll take it home for my children. But before he could pick it up, his horse gave the big red ball a great kick. Bounce, bounce, bounce. The red ball hopped across the field and flew into the air. This time it landed on a barge in the river. The big red ball bounced on the barge man's head. Oof! What a scare you gave me, said the barge man crossly. He picked up the ball and threw it into the river. This time it did not bounce, bounce, bounce. Instead, it floated. This is no fun, thought the big red ball. This is Boring. I want to bounce and bounce and bounce. I hate floating in the water. Soon the river joined the sea and the big red ball was tossed about and thrown around by the waves. It was frightened. What a lovely red ball, said a little boy who was swimming in the sea. The little boy took the red ball to the beach. Oh, what a bouncy ball said his father. Let's have a game with it. Soon the big red ball was going to and fro between them. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Just like it used to.
what an exciting story. It makes me tired just thinking about it. Well, oh. let's sing a bedtime song and then you can go to sleep. Oh, all right, Doris. What's your favourite bedtime song? Um, I think it's Pussycat Pussycat. Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to see the Queen. Pussycat, Pussycat, what did you there? I frightened a little mouse under a chair. Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to see the Queen. Pussycat, Pussycat, what did you there? I frightened a little mouse under a chair. Night, night, ha. Ah. Goodbye, everybody. We'll be back soon. Morris would say goodbye, but he's fast asleep. Goodbye. Thank you.